Roundabouts can seem kind of foreign to a lot of Utah drivers. I mean, in Utah, you might have stop signs or stop lights or, I don't know, yield signs or no signs at all. But check this out. We've had roundabouts in Utah for over 30 years. There's hundreds of these strange, not so strange, intersections all over the state. And they can go on a variety of roads. One lane, two lane, roads from 25 to 65 miles per hour. And they work surprisingly well in Utah especially where safety's concerned. Here's why. On any road, you can imagine the paths that cars might take, and anywhere these paths touch, you get a conflict point, a potential crash. A four-way intersection has 32 conflict points. And the worst kind of conflicts, the T-bone and head-on crashes, they're all crammed right in the middle. Roundabouts avoid these severe conflict points by going around them. And when we imagine the roundabout paths, there we go, we get eight conflict points, from 32 down to eight. And since none of these conflict points are the super bad kind, even if there is a crash, it's a rear end or side to side crash, the less severe kind. In fact, a study of non-roundabouts that were later converted to roundabouts found that fatal and serious crashes were reduced by as much as 88%. And they're surprisingly simple to drive. Slow down, yield to vehicles already in the roundabout, and go when there's an opening. And this is where the genius of a roundabout really shines through. You see, when we choose locations for roundabouts, we're looking for a moderate amount of traffic that's using all connecting roads, which gives us a roundabout where exiting vehicles create openings for other drivers in all directions. Watch for it next time you're at a roundabout. A car exits, which lets another car enter, and that car eventually exits on and on. It's like a perpetual motion machine that's super efficient at moving cars safely. And that safety extends to pedestrians as well. Cars are already going slower, and they're yielding in both directions to pedestrians, which they should be doing everywhere, by the way. And we also have these raised islands at the entry to most roundabouts, which allow pedestrians to cross one direction at a time. First watching for exiting vehicles to yield, and then for entering vehicles to yield. If you're on a bicycle, you have two options at a roundabout. Follow pedestrian or bicycle paths beside the road. This is recommended for most people. Or advanced riders might choose to stay on the road. Just keep in mind that roundabouts don't really have shoulders because of the constant entering and exiting. So if you are on the road, occupy the entire lane like a car. And that's it. Fewer conflict points and slower speeds make roundabouts an efficient, safe, and not so strange option for cars, bikes, and pedestrians at Utah intersections. Another example of how UDOT keeps Utah moving safely.